Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet a round yoke pullover sweater. All right, so the first thing you'll need for this project is the written pattern. You can view the free version of the written pattern by clicking the first link in the video description down below, or you can grab the ad-free printable PDF version of the written pattern by visiting the second link down below. So this is a round yoke sweater, which basically means that we're going to start at the neck and we're going to work from the top down. So we're gonna start with the neck and then we're going to make basically a big circle that has the neck opening in the middle. And then we're going to divide that into sections to work the body of the sweater and the sleeves. This pattern comes in nine sizes from a women's extra small to a 5X. To determine which size you're going to make, then compare the wearer's bust measurement to the measurements given in the written pattern, and that will help you know which size you'll need to make. Then once you know which size you're making, then you can get some yarn. So for this project, I am using a pretty new yarn from We Crochet and Knit Picks basically the same brand. And this is called Upcycle Alpaca Blend. This is the sport weight version, okay? There is a worsted weight version of this yarn available as well, but we are using the sport weight version. You cannot substitute the worsted weight version. So whatever yarn that you use, even if you don't use this exact yarn, you need to use one that is number two sport weight. So this is part alpaca, part wool, and part acrylic, and this is kind of an upcycled yarn. And it is kind of a heathered yarn where that there are multiple, very slightly different shades of the same color twisted together. And you can see how there are a few little alpaca fibers that stick out. That's totally normal with alpaca yarn, but you don't have to use alpaca. You can use an acrylic or whatever fiber you like as long as it is sport weight. So follow the pattern instructions to figure out how much yarn you need for the size that you're making, the pattern will tell you. And then when you go to purchase yarn for this project, you need at least that many yards of yarn. The yardage given in the pattern is like the minimum. This is a, at least how much you need, but having some extra won't hurt anything. So I have several skeins of this yarn here. It's very soft and smooth. Make sure that whatever yarn you're using feels nice against the skin. You don't want anything prickly or scratchy. And then once you've picked out your yarn, you're also going to need a few other supplies. First of all, you'll need a size H or five millimeter crochet hook. This is a Clover Amour crochet hook. However, you'll want to check your gauge and make sure that you're using whichever hook size gets you the correct gauge for the pattern. Hook size in a pattern is a recommendation only. So make sure you check your gauge and adjust your hook size accordingly to match the pattern gauge. You will also need a measuring tape, some scissors, these are folding scissors. And you'll need a yarn needle or blunt tapestry needle just for weaving in ends because we're not really doing hardly any seaming here. The only places where we're seaming anything is at the cuffs and the neck ribbing. So minimal seaming, that's the beauty of a top-down sweater but you will still need a yarn needle at least for weaving in your ends and sewing those few little short seams. And then you'll also need a stitch marker. Now this is a clip-on stitch marker. You can use a split ring stitch marker or whatever if you want. This is kind of optional, but I recommend using it anyway just to help keep track of which edge is which on your neck ribbing. And I will explain that when we get to the neck ribbing, but I do recommend using a stitch marker with this project if you have one. If you don't have one, a hairpin works just fine, a bobby pin, a safety pin, something of that sort that you can clip or pin to your fabric to mark which edge is which. So now that we have all of our supplies ready here, now we can start crocheting. All right, so I've got my yarn here and I'm using the center pole end of the skein. And we're going to start with the neck ribbing. So what we're going to do is make a strip of ribbing and then we're going to sew the, the two short ends of that strip of ribbing together to make a circle. And then we're going to work around the outside edge of that ribbing to start making our yoke, which is the shoulder and neck portion of the sweater. Now we are going to do a little bit of a trick with this neck ribbing to make the one edge shorter than the other so that it will curve nicely when we want to make it into a circle for our neck ribbing. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by 
leaving a tail at least nine inches long. That's for our little bitty short seam that we're going to use to join the ends of the neck ribbing together. We're leaving a tail at least nine inches long. And then we're going to start by chaining nine. All right, so I have nine chain stitches here. I'm going to skip the first chain from the hook and I'm gonna single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each remaining chain stitch across. All right, so I made it across. That is row one. So this is the width of our neck ribbing. So for row two, we're going to turn the work, but we're not going to chain one. This is the edge that's going to be shorter. That's going to be the inside edge of our neck ribbing, the one closest to the face. So we're going to make this edge slightly shorter so that it curves more easily. So I'm not going to chain one for row two. I'm just going to single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch and in the back loop only of each single crochet across. And if you're not familiar with working in the back loop only, I have an entire video that shows how to do that, which I will link down below. But basically when we look at the top of the stitch, there's a sideways V shape here. We're only going to, like normally we would insert under both strands of the V, we're only going to insert our hook under the back strand instead. That's the back loop only. So we're going to continue across, single crocheting in the back loop only of each single crochet from the row below, but we are not going to single crochet in the chain that we skipped from the beginning of the previous row. So here's where our stitch marker comes in. It is optional, but I'm going to recommend that you use one if you have one. Like I said, another object would work just fine for a stitch marker, like a safety pin. So what I'm going to do is on the beginning end of row two, where we did not chain one, I'm gonna put the stitch marker in that end. Because on the other side of our piece, at the beginning of row three, we are going to chain one when we turn, and then single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch, single crochet in the back loop only of each single crochet across, each remaining single crochet across. So by using the chain one at the beginning of the row on one side of our strip and not chaining one at the beginning of the row on the other side, we're going to make this neck ribbing lay more smoothly as we curve it around the neck. So for rows four to 135, we're going to repeat rows two to three. So we're gonna work row two, row three, row two, row three, row two, row three, and continue repeating that pair of rows until we have a total of 135 rows. For demonstration purposes, since we have our stitch marker here, this is how we know that the next row we're gonna work is row two. So on this side, this edge where the stitch marker is, I am not going to chain one when I turn. I'm just gonna single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch and in each, the back loop only of each stitch across. And then on this edge, where I have no stitch marker, I know that that's the edge I am going to chain one before turning the work and then single crocheting in the back loop only of the same stitch and each stitch across. This edge of the work, my stitch marker is here, so I'm not going to chain one and turn. I'm just gonna turn because this is a row two since there is no stitch marker, I am going to chain one before I turn the work and work across in the back loop only. So having that stitch marker there just helps you keep track of which way you're supposed to begin the row. And once I have worked all of these repeats and I have a total of 135 rows, the last row will be a row three, then I will show you how that this helps our piece to curve. If I lay this down here, you can kind of see, it's very slight, but you can kind of see how that this edge where we do chain one at the beginning of the row is slightly taller than this edge. And that will just allow our piece to curve more smoothly when we make it curve around the neck. So I am going to go ahead and continue repeating rows two and three until I have a total of 135 rows. And by the way, I am making the extra small. However, this number will be the same for all sizes. All right, so I have now completed a total of 135 rows, repeating that sequence of rows two to three. And the last row that we worked was row three. So to finish off our neck ribbing, we're going to work row 136. 
and that is just to repeat row two. So we're going to turn the work, single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch, and in each of the remaining single crochet stitches across. And that is the end of our neck ribbing. So now what we're going to do is we are going to join the neck ribbing together. So this stitch marker here is where I had marked the side of the work that does not have a chain one at the beginning of the row. I prefer to keep moving the stitch marker a little bit further up as the piece gets longer. But as you can see, that simple step of not chaining one at the one edge at when we begin our rows and doing it at the other edge, it helps to kind of give the piece the ability to curve more easily. So it just kind of makes the inside edge a little tiny bit shorter, just slightly shorter, so that it has a little bit of a natural curve to it. So that's going to help us out when we join this together. So what we're going to do is we are not going to tie off, okay? We're gonna keep our hook here, and we're going to continue working with our working yarn once we join the ends of our ribbing together. But we need to just stitch our ribbing ends together so that we can then work around our neck ribbing with the next row. So I'm going to curve this around and bring the neck ribbing ends together without twisting anything. And we're going to sew the foundation chain edge to the top of row 136. And you can see how easily this curves around because of the inside edge not having the chain one. So I'm gonna grab a yarn needle here and I'm going to thread my yarn tail from the beginning through the yarn needle and we're going to stitch these two edges together. So we're going to start stitching this edge to this edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and insert my needle into this edge on the first stitch and then through the other end on the first stitch. Then again on the second stitch. And we're just whip stitching this together. So that means we're going to go down on one side and up on the other side and then pull it all the way through. So down on one side, up on the other side, pull it through, down, up, and pull it through. And this is a very, very short seam because it's only eight single crochet stitches wide. But this will give us kind of a base to work our yoke off of because we're making a round yoke and this ribbing is going to be the beginning of our round section of our sweater. All right, so I'm all the way to the corner there. And I'm gonna take one more stitch through that very corner just to be able to make my knot. So I've poked my needle through, wrapped the yarn around the needle, and then I'm pulling it through to make a knot. So that is the neck ribbing seam. And it's pretty inconspicuous. So I am going to weave in this yarn tail real quick. I'm just gonna stretch the loop on my hook and set the hook down. And then I'm gonna weave the yarn tail into the seam. And by just going ahead and weaving this in now while it's already on the yarn needle, we can just get it taken care of. And that's just something we don't have to do later. And it will be out of the way. So I've woven it in through the seam. I like to also go ahead and weave it in through a row or two just for extra security. I don't ever like to just weave it in two inches and then cut it off. You wanna weave your tail in at least several inches. All right, so that is woven in. I'm just gonna trim off the extra yarn tail that's left. And there is our finished neck ribbing. So now I can shrink that loop back down and put the hook back in the work. And we're going to go ahead and start adding to our circle and increasing stitches to make the entire yoke larger in every direction. So to do that, we're going to be working a series of increase rounds. But first of all, we're going to work kind of a base round where we're going to work into all the ends of the rows. And so that is what we're going to do for round one. We're going to work a round of single crochet, working into the ends of all the rows on the outside of our circle here. So for round one, you're going to stretch the loop on your hook just a tiny bit, and then single crochet in 
the end of the same row that your loop is coming from. And then we're going to single crochet in the end of each row all the way around. So here's the next row. And I'm going to insert my hook into the end of that row and single crochet there. And then the next one. And the next one. And sometimes it is a little tricky to insert your hook into the ends of those rows. But if you don't want to insert it into the tightest part of the end of the row, then however you decide to poke it in there is fine. If you just want to kind of slip the hook between the chain one and the first single crochet on some rows, on the rows that have a chain one on this edge, that's fine. You can single crochet around the outer single crochet of the other rows that are in between. But regardless, we are just single crocheting once in the end of each row, all the way around, until we get back to the beginning. All right, so I'm almost around to the beginning. And before you join the work, here's my first single crochet right here. You wanna go ahead and count and make sure you have enough stitches. You should have 136 single crochet stitches around the edge of your piece. So go ahead and count your stitches first, and then we're going to go ahead and join the round. All right, so I have the correct number of stitches here, and we're going to do something at the end to join our round here called the invisible slip stitch. Now, if you haven't heard of this before, that's okay. This is just kind of something that I made up that I use in a lot of my patterns, and this is a way of joining without a slip stitch. It's cleaner than a slip stitch, and it kind of helps the join disappear better. So what we're going to do is we're going to locate the top of the first single crochet that we made, and by the way, I have an entire video on this technique. If you want more info on that or more instruction, I will link that down below. What we're going to do is we're going to insert our hook through that first stitch of the round from back to front, like so. And by the way, when you do this, you have to have uh, removed your, your hook from the loop on the hook. So I've inserted my hook from back to front. I'm gonna grab that loop and put it back over my hook shaft and I'm going to pull this loop through the stitch from front to back. And then I can just kind of snug that loop back down to fit the shaft of the hook. So now we have 136 single crochets around the edge of our neck ribbing, and you can see how that has made the edge nice and neat. And now we will be able to easily work into our neck ribbing as we expand our circle. All right, so now we're ready to work round two. So if you've watched my invisible join video, then you may have seen my tutorial for a chainless starting half double crochet. And although that is my preferred method, I also realize that not everybody will want to do that over and over and over again on a full project like this. So for this project, we're going to skip the chainless starting half double crochet. And instead, what we're going to do is we are going to first turn the work, then we're going to chain one, and pull the loop on the hook to tighten the chain a bit. And then we're going to chain one again. So we've kind of made a chain one and a half in a way where we made the first chain, tightened it, and then made a second chain. So the tightened chain will be shorter, smaller, more compact. And the second one will give us just enough height that we can use a regular half double crochet to start our round while keeping the join as close to invisible as possible and keeping the bulk of the chain minimized. So I'm now going to half double crochet in the front loop only of the first stitch. So just as we have been working in the back loop only for our ribbing, for the rest of the sweater, for the most part, we're going to be working in the front loop only. So when we look at the top of the stitch, we can see there are two strands. The back loop is the one furthest away from you. The front loop is the one closest to you. So I'm only inserting into the front loop of that stitch, and I'm going to half double crochet there. And working into the front loop just helps give us a more drapey fabric. And it also kind of gives the fabric a neat texture. So now I'm going to half double crochet in the front loop only of the next 15 stitches. And 15, and now we're going to work two half double crochet into the front loop only of the next stitch. So as we work around in these rounds, we're going to be increasing stitches. So we're going to add stitches to make our circle bigger as we go, so that it will lay flat. And now that I've worked that first increase, we're going to start a repeat sequence. So this next set of stitches, we're going to repeat 
several times. And the sequence is to half double crochet in the front loop only of the next 16 stitches. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen and then two half double crochet in the front loop only of the next stitch. So we are working two half double crochets in that stitch to add a stitch in that spot. So we're going to repeat that little sequence of half double crochet in the front loop only of the next 16 stitches and then put two half double crochet in the front loop only of the next stitch. We're going to repeat that sequence six more times and then we will go ahead and join the round. All right, so I'm back around to the beginning, and now all we have left to do is join the round. So if we look at the top of this half double crochet here at the beginning of our round, we can see what the top of that stitch looks like. And we're going to invisible slip stitch in the top of the first half double crochet of the beginning of the round. So I'm gonna stretch the loop on my hook and let go of it. Then I'm gonna insert my hook into the stitch from back to front, slip that loop back over my hook tip, and pull the loop through from front to back. Now I can snug that loop back down, and that's the end of round two. So next we're going to turn and work round three. We're gonna turn the work. Again, we're going to chain one, pull it tight, and then chain one again. We're going to half double crochet in the front loop only of the first stitch, and then we're gonna half double crochet in the front loop only of the next 16 stitches. All right. And by the way, when we work into the front loop only of a half double crochet, it looks a little different because the half double crochet also has this third loop, not on the top of the stitch, but on the side of the stitch that's facing us. But we're still working into, when we look at the, the V shape on top, we're still working into this loop right here, the front loop of the top of the stitch, not this one down here. So I've half double crocheted in the front loop only of the next 16 stitches. Now I'm gonna work two half double crochet in the front loop only of the next stitch. So now we begin our repeating sequence. So for this sequence, we're going to half double crochet in the front loop only of the next 17 stitches. All right, and then we're going to work two half double crochet in the front loop only of the next stitch. So we're going to repeat that sequence of half double crochet in the front loop only of the next 17 stitches and then work two half double crochet in the front loop only of the next stitch. We're gonna repeat that six more times and then we're going to join the round again. All right, so I am back to the beginning of the round. I've worked all my repeats and now we're going to join with that invisible slip stitch again. I've stretched the loop on my hook and removed it. I'm gonna insert my hook into the top of the first half double crochet of the round from back to front. And I'm gonna grab that loop, put it back on the hook, and pull it through from front to back. And I can just snug that loop back down to the size of the hook shaft. So that's the end of round three. And you can see how our circle is getting larger, but it's still laying flat. And that's what we're going for overall. So although the instructions thus far have been the same for all sizes, they are going to continue to be the same for all sizes for a while because we're going to continually be adding rows. So instead of each round being different for each size, what's going to happen is that as we progress and as we continue to add stitches, for example, since this is the extra small, I'm going to work through a certain round and then the instructions are going to tell me to stop here and move to round 33. And then the size small is going to work the next few following rounds and then it's going to say stop here and move to round 33. So then the medium after a few additional rounds is going to say stop here and move to round 33. So basically we are going to continue working rounds that add stitches just like the rounds we've just done and each time we move to the next round, there's going to be more 
regular half double crochet stitches between the sets of stitches where we have two half double crochets in one stitch. So those are going to continue to be spaced further and further out as we move along through our project here. And if you're looking at this neck opening here and thinking that looks really small, you have to be able to get your head through that. Don't worry about that because the actual size of the neck opening where it can stretch to is this big where the outside edge of our ribbing is. So when you go to put this over your head, there's plenty of room because this is a stretchy neck ribbing and it has the ability to open up all the way to this circumference here. So don't worry about the neck ribbing being too small even though it looks fairly small right now. This is a higher neckline sweater, but you don't have to worry about that because it is designed to be plenty large enough to easily slip over your head. So I am going to continue progressing through the round by round instructions as they are written until the pattern says to stop for the size that I'm making. So every round has exact instructions with exact stitch numbers and how many stitches to work before doing the two in one stitch below. And just follow the instructions as written for these increase rounds until the pattern says for the size you're making to stop and move to round 33. So I'm going to do that for this one, which is the extra small. So if you are looking at the written pattern right now, for the extra small after round nine, it says for extra small, stop here, skip rounds 10 to 32 and go to round 33. So I'm going to work up through round nine and then we will skip to round 33. But for whatever size you're making, just follow the instructions as written. All the following rounds are very similar to the ones that we just did. And then whenever you come to the place where it says for your size to stop and skip to round 33, then stop and we will move to round 33. So the next step, after these increase rounds is to go to round 33. All right, so I have reached the point where for the size that I'm making, the pattern says stop here and skip this certain number of rounds and go to round 33. For some of the sizes, it will say skip to round 34. Some sizes don't need round 33, but this one does, so I'm going to go ahead and work round 33. And you can see that at this point, my circle has gotten larger, but it's still laying flat. So at this point, we have enough stitches for the yoke of our sweater, but for some of the sizes, we don't yet have enough length in our yoke. So if I fold this down and we look at our neckline here, this is not deep enough for an armhole yet. So even though we have enough stitches here, we don't have enough length in our yoke for some of the sizes. So the ones that don't have enough length for the yoke yet, once we've increased all of our stitches, are going to be working round 33. So for round 33, I'm going to turn the work. We're going to chain one, pull that chain tight, and then chain one again. Then we're going to half double crochet in the front loop only of the first stitch and half double crochet in the front loop only of each stitch around. So this is basically a plain front loop only half double crochet round. And how many times we repeat this round will depend on which size you're making. So I'm going to half double crochet in the front loop only of each stitch around and then we will join at the end of the round. All right, so I'm back around to the beginning and I'm gonna join in the first half double crochet with the invisible slip stitch. And that's the end of round 33. Now, if your size requires round 33, then the pattern will tell you how many times to repeat round 33. So for the size that I'm making, I'm going to repeat round 33 another seven times. And then we will move on to splitting the yoke, which means we will divide the sleeve stitches from the body stitches. And then we will be working only on the body of our sweater starting in round 34. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat round 33 seven more times for the size that I'm making. And then I will show you round 34 and what we're going to do next. All right, so I finished repeating round 33 the correct number of times for the size that I'm making. And now we're ready to move on to round 34. So what's going to happen in this round is we are basically going to start making this circle into an actual sweater shaped object here. So we're going to be dividing the sleeve stitches from the body stitches. 
so that we can work just on the body by itself and then we can finish out the sleeves later. So for round 34, we're going to turn the work. We're going to chain one, pull it a little tighter, and then chain one again, just like we've been doing for all of our rounds. Then we're going to half double crochet in the front loop only of the first stitch. So next, for the size that I'm making, I'm going to half double crochet in the front loop only of the next 30 stitches. That number will differ, depend on which size you're making. All right, so now we are going to create kind of the underarm of our sweater. So for the size that I'm making, I'm going to chain 12. And then I am going to, for the size that I'm making, skip the next 38 stitches. And again, check the pattern for the numbers for the size that you are making because they will vary depending on the size. All right, so I've skipped 38 stitches. And now I'm gonna half double crochet in the front loop only of the next 62 stitches for the size that I'm making. All right, so now we're going to do the other underarm section of our sweater. And for the size I'm making, I'm going to chain 12 again. And again, skip 38. And then for the size that I'm making, I'm going to half double crochet in the front loop only of the next 31 stitches to get back to the beginning of my round. All right, so I'm back to the beginning of my round. I'm going to join in the first half double crochet with the invisible slip stitch. And that is the end of round 34. So if I lay this out here, our joining spot on the back is, this is our center back where our join is, although it is pretty invisible. This is kind of how our piece is structured now. We have our sleeve opening here. This portion down here is going to be the body. And then this is our other sleeve. So now let's move to round 35, which is going to add length to the body of our sweater. We're going to turn the work, which I've already done, chain one, pull the loop a little bit tight, and then chain one again. And for this round, we are going to half double crochet in the front loop only of the next stitch. And then we're gonna half double crochet in the front loop only of each stitch around, including the chain stitches that make up the underarm section of our sweater. All right, so I'm back to the beginning of my round. I can join with the invisible slip stitch, and that is the end of round 35. So if we lay our piece down, you can kind of see how our round has gone around only the body of the sweater without going around the sleeves. So depending on what size you're making, we're gonna keep repeating round 35 until our sweater is almost to its full length. So for the size that I'm making, I'm going to repeat round 35 another 31 more times, but check the pattern to see what number you'll need to follow for the size you're making. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we will add the ribbing at the bottom. All right, so I have repeated round 35 31 more times for the size that I'm making. And if I lay this out flat, here's what our piece looks like. So here's the armhole. And here's the other armhole, and this up here is the yoke of the sweater. So now we're ready to go ahead and add our hem ribbing. So this is going to be a band of ribbing that we're going to work onto the bottom edge of the sweater in back loop only single crochet. All right, now I'm going to skip the first chain, single crochet in the second chain from the hook, and single crochet in each of the next seven chain stitches. All right, so that is the end of row one of our ribbing, and we're going to be working our rows in the opposite direction. So we were working rounds going this way. Now we're working short little rows back and forth that we're going to join as we go to the bottom edge of our sweater. So for row two, we're going to slip stitch in the next two stitches of the sweater hem, and we're going to turn the work. Then we're gonna skip the two slip stitches that we just made, and just single crochet in the back loop only of each of those eight single crochet stitches from the previous row. All right, so that is row two. Now for row three, we're going to chain one and turn. We're going to single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch our chain is coming from and in the back loop only of the next seven single crochet stitches. All right, so that is row three. So now we're going to repeat rows two to three of our ribbing until we've made it all the way around the sweater hem and we're back to the beginning. 
and we're going to end with row two. That's going to be the last row that we work. And so every time we work those two rows, so row two, then row three, row two, then row three, we're going to be joining, every time we do row two, we're joining our ribbing to the bottom edge. So just for demonstration, I'm gonna work row two again. I'm gonna slip stitch in the next two stitches of the hem of the sweater, turn the work, skip the two slip stitches, single crochet in the back loop only of the next eight single crochets from the row below. And then for row three, we chain one and turn, single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch and in the next seven stitches. And so that's the end of row three. We're gonna keep repeating those two rows, alternating back and forth until we have created a strip of ribbing that is attached to and runs all the way around the hem of our sweater. So I'm gonna continue repeating rows two and three until my ribbing goes all the way around this edge back to the beginning, ending with row two. All right, so as you can see, I have finished the ribbing all the way around the edge, and I have ended with row two, so the last row I worked was row two. And basically, you wanna make sure that you've used up all the stitches that were around the bottom edge of your sweater. So what's here is just a slit and not a gap. There is not a gap here between the last row we did and the first row that we did. So now all we have to do to finish the body of the sweater is to sew up this little slit right here. So I'm gonna leave a tail and cut the yarn and then I'm going to go ahead and tie off. And I'm gonna stitch with my yarn needle the foundation chain edge of my ribbing to the top of the last row that we just did. All right, so I'm gonna turn this sideways a little bit. And if you can see here, I've threaded my yarn tail through the yarn needle. I'm just gonna come to the very corner of the foundation edge over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch this together by working into the back loop only on the last row that we did. Now you can just use a regular whip stitch and just stitch the edge together however you like and it will blend in pretty nicely. But I'm going to go ahead and stitch it in the back loop only so that it will not interrupt our ribbing pattern at all. So that means that when I come over here and pick up a chain from the foundation chain edge of the work, I'm going to pick up, when I pick up off of the last row that we just did, I'm only gonna pick up the back loop. So I'm only inserting my needle under the one strand that would be the back loop if we were going to crochet across this row again and pulling that through. And I'm just gonna do that for each stitch across. Like I said, if you want to, you can totally just go through the entire top of the stitch with your yarn needle. But by only going through that back loop, that will just make our finished ribbing look even more professional by not interrupting the texture of the ribbing at all. All right, so I'm to the last stitch there. And I'm just going to take one more little tiny stitch at the very, very top of that seam to make sure that it is closed up all the way. And then I'm gonna take my needle to the inside of the work I'm gonna pick up a strand of yarn very close by where my yarn is coming out, wrap the yarn around the needle, and pull the needle through to make a knot. And now I can go ahead and weave in that yarn tail. So I'm going to go ahead and slip my yarn needle through the whip stitches of my seam here as it goes out to the edge. And then I'm gonna come back across another row of crochet to make sure, at least one more row, preferably two, to make sure that my yarn tail is woven in securely because we don't want that wiggling out. So I'm weaving it in across the next row of ribbing. Then I'm gonna come back down here, bring my needle down just a tiny bit and weave it in across another row. All right, there we go. So our tail is woven in pretty securely. And now we can go ahead and trim the extra. 
So that is the body of our sweater all finished. And now we have to move on to the sleeves. So at this point, we could stop here and have a cap sleeve sweater, but we're going for a sweater with sleeves. So we're going to go ahead and join around this sleeve opening to add our sleeves working in rounds. All right, so we wanna make sure that our sweater yoke is turned so that the back of the last round of half double crochet that goes around most of the edge of our sleeve opening is facing out. So this is the back of the last row of half double crochet stitches that is going around the upper part of the sleeve opening. We're gonna turn our sweater so those are facing out and then we're going to join our yarn. So if we look at our sleeve opening here, we want to join the yarn in the middle of our underarm chain section here approximately in the middle. So this part up here was the half double crochet stitches from our yoke originally, and then this is where we chained to make the underarm. So I've got my yarn ready here, and I'm going to leave a tail and crochet over it as I go. And with my finger, I have marked here what is approximately the center of the underarm chain section here, and I've inserted my hook into one of those chains that is very close to the center. So I'm going to pull up a loop of yarn to join, and then I'm gonna chain one. So first of all, I'm gonna half double crochet in the same stitch my chain came from, and then I'm gonna half double crochet in each remaining stitch along the underarm edge. So that means I'm going to work into the other side of each chain stitch that is running upside down along this underarm edge. So I've done a few right there, there's another one, another, and there's one more. I'm looking to see if there is one of those inserted into where I am poking my hook, and that is the last chain stitch. So I'm gonna kind of rotate this as we go around. So now we're going to do a little something here to close up the gap that is kind of created by where we stopped chaining and where the actual tops of stitches are from the next section of our underarm opening. So I'm gonna move my tail out of the way here so you can kind of see what we've got. So now that we've crocheted in each of the chains along the underarm, we now have what would otherwise be a gap between those chains and the first actual stitch that is part of where we need to work our round but we're going to do something to remove that gap before it happens and avoid having a hole there. Basically what we would need to do is half double crochet over here in the first half double crochet that has not been worked into along the upper portion of the sleeve opening. So this right here is, if you can see this sideways half double crochet here, it is being worked into the front loop of this stitch. So this stitch has already been worked into. This would be the first half double crochet that has not been worked into. So what we're going to do is basically work a half double crochet two together between this sideways half double crochet from round 34 and the first half double crochet that we are wanting to work into. So I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna insert my hook into the sideways half double crochet from round 34, yarn over and pull up a loop. That's the first half of my half double crochet two together. Then I'm gonna yarn over again, and then I'm gonna insert my hook into the front loop only of the first unworked half double crochet that is coming up next along our sleeve opening. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Then I can yarn over, pull through all the loops on my hook, and we have essentially closed up that gap without adding any extra stitches. So now we're going to half double crochet in the front loop only of the remaining stitches around the top part of our sleeve opening. This number will vary depending on which size you're making, but for the size that I'm making, I need to half double crochet in the front loop only of the next 36 stitches. All right, so I have worked around the upper portion of that sleeve opening edge, and I have one unworked half double crochet left here. So I'm gonna do that same half double crochet two together thing again. 
So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook in the front loop only of the last half double crochet that hasn't been worked into yet along the top part of the sleeve opening. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Then I'm going to yarn over and insert my hook into the side of this sideways half double crochet right here. And I really want to split it with my hook. Pick up like two strands of yarn from that. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And then I can yarn over and pull through all the remaining loops on the hook. And we have closed up that gap as well. So now we're going to look back to the chain stitches along the underarm edge and half double crochet in each of the remaining chain stitches along this edge. So each time we see the base of a half double crochet stitch worked into this foundation chain edge, we're going to work a half double crochet there. All right, so I'm back around to the beginning of my round and I can now join in the top of that first half double crochet with an invisible slip stitch. So that is the end of round one of our sleeve. So now we're going to work round two and basically the purpose of round two is to add length to our sleeve. So I'm going to turn the work and chain one, pull the loop on the hook to tighten the chain a bit and then chain one again. And I'm going to half double crochet in the front loop only of the first stitch and half double crochet in the front loop only of each stitch around. All right, so I'm back around to the beginning of my round and I can join in the top of the first half double crochet with the invisible slip stitch. And that's the end of round two. So basically we're going to keep repeating round two until our sleeve is almost to its finish length. And the number of times you're going to repeat this will depend on which size you're making. But for the size that I'm making, which is the extra small, I'm going to repeat round two 33 more times, and then we will be ready to finish up our sleeve. All right, so here is my sleeve so far, and you can see how that we have added a bunch of length here to our sleeve. And now we're ready to start the little section where we're going to make the sleeve get smaller close to the cuff before we work our cuff ribbing. So I've finished repeating round two, the correct number of times for the size that I'm making. So now I'm ready to work round three. I've turned the work and I'm going to chain one, pull the loop a little bit tighter to make the chain smaller and then chain one again. Then I'm gonna half double crochet in the front loop only of the first stitch. Next, I'm going to half double crochet two together in the front loop only. So that means I'm going to work two stitches into one. That's called a decrease. So to half double crochet two together, I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook into the front loop only of the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. I'm gonna yarn over again, insert my hook into the front loop only of the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. And then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook. So now I'm going to start repeating a little sequence all the way around my round. And that sequence is to half double crochet in the front loop only of the next stitch and then half double crochet two together in the front loop only. And I'm going to repeat that sequence 14 more times for the size that I'm making, but check the pattern to see how many times you need to repeat that for the size that you're making. All right, so I've done that the correct number of times for the size that I'm making. And then for the size that I'm making, I need to half double crochet in the front loop only of the next two stitches, which is all of the stitches that I have left in my round. And join with an invisible slip stitch in the top of the first half double crochet. So that is round three. And you can kind of see how that the width of my sleeve is shrinking a little bit because we're making this narrower next to the cuff. Now we're ready to work round four. I've turned the work. I'm gonna chain one, pull it a little smaller, and then chain one again. Then I'm gonna half double crochet in the front loop only of the first stitch. And for the size that I'm making, I'm gonna half double crochet in the front loop only of the next 14 stitches. All right, so I have worked the correct number of half double crochets in the front loop only for the size that I'm making. And then I'm gonna half double crochet two together in the front loop only. 
So now we're going to work a repeating sequence, and for the size that I'm making, that sequence is to half double crochet in the front loop only of the next 15 stitches, and then half double crochet two together in the front loop only. So I'm going to half double crochet in the front loop only of the next 15 stitches total, including the ones that I've already done so far, and then I will half double crochet two together in the front loop only. All right, and there's my half double crochet two together in the front loop only. And that is the sequence. And for some sizes, you will have fewer half double crochets in your sequence, and you will repeat that sequence multiple times. But for the size that I'm making, the pattern says to repeat that sequence zero more times, which means I'm not going to do it again. So it then says to half double crochet in the front loop only of the next zero stitches for the size that I'm making. And if you're making a size that also says to do zero stitches, that's okay. But there are some sizes that do require you to half double crochet in the last few stitches. But in this case, it says half double crochet in the front loop only of the next zero stitches because we're already to the end of our round. So now we're going to join with the invisible slip stitch to finish off our round. So now we've decreased the stitches for the cuff. We can kind of see how it's shrunk a little bit. It's gotten a little bit narrower. And we're gonna add some ribbing to our cuff. So this is very similar to the ribbing that we made when we went around the hem of our sweater. So I'm going to chain nine, then I'm gonna skip the first chain, single crochet in the second chain from the hook, and single crochet in the remaining seven chains. And that is row one of my ribbing. So for row two, we're going to slip stitch in the next two stitches of the sleeve cuff and turn the work. We're gonna skip the two slip stitches that we just made and single crochet in the back loop only of the next eight single crochets from the row below. All right, so that's the end of row two. And then for row three, I'm gonna chain one and turn. And I'm going to single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch and in the back loop only of the next seven single crochets across. All right, so that's the end of row three. So now we're going to repeat rows two to three until we have made it all the way around the edge of the sleeve cuff, very similar to when we did our hem ribbing on the bottom of our sweater. And we're going to finish with row two as the last row that we work. So just as we did with our hem ribbing, I'm gonna continue repeating rows two and three, row two, row three, row two, row three, row two, row three, until I make it all the way around the sleeve cuff here and get back to where we started. All right, so I've finished doing the ribbing all the way around the cuff and I have tied off, leaving a tail. And all that we're going to do here is sew this little slit closed with our yarn tail, just as we did for the hem ribbing. Now, at first glance, this cuff might look really small, but it is just designed to be fitted so that once it is closed, if I kind of put it on backwards here, it has plenty of stretch in it, plenty of room to comfortably fit around the wrist, but it's not so loose that the sleeve cuff will slide around. The idea here is for the sleeve cuff to be a little bit more fitted so that the length will fit well. So if the sleeve cuff fits snugly, but not tightly, just comfortably snug around the wrist, even though it still has some room to stretch, it's not going to slide off of your hand. So if the sleeve happens to be slightly long on you, then it will not slide down past the wrist here because that is where our fitted, but still plenty stretchy cuff is going to go. So if you can see here, if we let this just kind of shrink up the way that it naturally wants to, it looks pretty small, but there's plenty of elasticity and stretch here. So the hand will easily be able to slide through and it will comfortably stretch to fit nicely around the sleeve without being tight. So like I said, I'm just going to take my yarn needle and sew up this little slit between the base of row one, the foundation edge of row one, and the top of row two, which was the last row that I worked once I repeated it all the way around. So once I do that little seam right there, then my first sleeve will be finished, and I can come over here to the other armhole on our sweater and follow the same exact instructions again for the other sleeve. 
So I'm going to go ahead and sew up that little ribbing seam and then add my other sleeve and then we will move on to blocking. Alright, so I have finished with both of my sleeves and I have seamed the ribbing on the cuff and woven in all my yarn tails. So now we only have one more step to finish off our sweater and that is blocking. So blocking is a way of getting the fabric to relax and assume kind of the natural drape and feel that it wants to assume. So what we're going to do is because this is a natural fiber yarn, it is part alpaca and wool, I'm going to wet block my sweater here. So I have an entire video on blocking if you want to check that out and learn more about how to block your projects. But what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to get the whole sweater wet, let it soak up some water. You don't want to be rough with it or agitate the fabric. You just want to get it wet, stick it in a bowl of water, let it absorb the water. Then you want to squeeze out as much of the excess water as possible without stretching or twisting or pulling your fabric out of shape. So I would normally do this by picking it up and just squeezing it and letting the extra water drip out and then you can also lay it on a towel and then roll the towel up with the sweater inside and press on it to get out the extra water. And by that point, once you take it out of the towel, your sweater will be just damp. And that's what we want. We don't want it to be soppy and wet. We just want it to be damp. And then the final step will be to lay it out on blocking mats or some thick towels. If you use blocking mats, then you can pin with T-pins or sewing pins, pin the edges of the project down into the foam so that it will hold its shape while it dries. But basically you wanna lay it out, spread it out nicely where that nothing is stretched or pulled in any way, and then just let it dry completely. And that is the basic wet blocking process for any project. That's what I'm gonna do with this sweater. And once I've finished blocking my sweater, then it will be finished. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.